Okay, I realized I probably could spend about 10 minutes bashing Linux. I figure why not? <laughs> no, I'm not bashing. You see, here's the, the whole problem. Is that some people that want to see Linux go somewhere will get angry when people complain. And they won't complain themselves. They'll just kind of shut up about it, right? And if someone else wants to say that you know everything's great and bug free, they won't interject. They just that's just kind of like what they do because they just want to see it succeed. Um, everybody, you know, people have everybody has their own, you know, everybody has different personalities in the mix. I I figure that I should just. <laughs> talk about what works and what doesn't work, you know, and try to get some feedback and maybe raise a little more awareness. I don't hear a lot of discussion about people saying that uh, what, what I call chaos in Linux land um, is impacting their ability to use it and it's impacting adoption, use, you know, uh, commercial app commercial companies porting their applications over to it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I brushed upon all these various subjects from my educated in one sense, very uneducated in the other sense point of view over these course of these videos. And obviously there is some solution <laughs> to the Java sound problem in Linux somewhere. I mean, at one point, my Linux is in a state to be able to do the right thing. It just doesn't stay in that state. I don't know why. Um, but getting back to my point, there really isn't a... On the one hand, you know, it's nothing short of a miracle that all these divergent projects are able to be put together by a... Linux is literally no one. No one says to anybody that has any work on anything in Linux that you got to do this by this or that time. Or at least there ain't, there ain't that many people. I mean, there's some people that are paid by Google because they know that the guy's going to be working on Samba, or they know that Linus is going to be working on the kernel, so he's paid by some not-for-profit, you know, the Linux Foundation to do that. You know, it's, but you know, it's not really. Google's main business to make Samba. What Samba is, is there's a server. <laughs> I click, <laughs> and there are files that I, are there that I could access here. That's what Samba is. It lets you do that with Linux. That's the Linux machine, and Linux is running on that, and it lets you connect from Windows machines to that, but also Linux machines to that. That's all Samba is. That's all you need to know, really. It works very well. It's been working for a very long time. The kernel itself probably is a very... It's, it's one of the greatest collaborative projects in the history of man, really. Literally, if you go look at Wikipedia, you can see how many, file, how many different features are supported by the Linux kernel compared to any other operating system out there. Everything else pales in comparison by far. But I'm talking about my focus is desktop user usability, <laughs> and um, and I'm trying to pin down exactly what it is. And we get all these mythos when it comes to desktop use that that get people confused. You know, there's you know it, it takes a little bit of guts for some people to say, yeah, I'm just going to go out. And I'm going to try a new operating system today. Okay, <laughs> and you know, so they they stick it in, they do their install, and you know, either it works for them or it doesn't. And if they run into problems, you know, it's gonna take someone with a little more guts to keep going and, and working with that. And it's gonna take a lot of guts to keep going if you know it's not working. It's gonna take even more guts to keep going if you know it's not working. You think it's not gonna change, but you gotta say something somebody somewhere get the message out somehow that this is what we got to do to make it right you know I um <laughs> the 
there's a lot of things that I'm trying to do here. On the one hand, I'm trying to say, okay, well, there's there's some guy in Germany making audio, right? Intel Corp makes my sound card. Who knows where they make it or where the engineers work. Maybe they work in Silicon Valley. Maybe they're in India now. I don't know. Um, and there's already Alza in place, and they're doing their own thing. I mean, granted, the guy that's the main developer at Pulse, I think he did some work on Alza that I that I read about, but but there's other things in the mix. I'm using a GNOME desktop that's that was designed and geared to use the open source operating uh, open source sound system uh, developed by the GNU project, and the GNU project is open code first, functionality later. And Java's made by Sun, yeah, or now Oracle, you know, they're, they have, I think their headquarters are around here in the San Francisco Bay Area, but, um, <laughs> you know, and you put all these different things together, and they're not necessarily talking day in and day out to make sure this stuff works right. Now, granted, Windows doesn't have that advantage with Oracle, but they, they may have some, they may have someone that works at Oracle, and his job's to talk with the guys down at Microsoft, who knows, or maybe the, there's a guy at Microsoft, his job is to talk to the guys at Sun to make sure it works right, and get everything, I mean, they might have a whole team on that, who knows, right, and so, the thing is, is that the distributions, they're going at such a fast pace, six months just is killing them, and some of the, the unfortunate thing is some of the distributions have a business model whereas they they're kind of giving Linux away as kind of like a trial in a way they don't really make sure that it's all together and right and good and everything and actually they have just people from the community put it together for them and then they pick up the scraps <laughs> they're left and turn into something they think is polished it's called the enterprise desktop but Again, the software is all, you know, usually a couple years older than the newer version because, you know, if they know people are complaining about Pulse Audio, they're not going to sell a two thousand dollar. Yeah, they cost about two thousand bucks. Sorry, two thousand bucks, maybe. They're not going to sell an expensive desktop like that to uh, an end user if they know that they're probably going to have some kind of problem with their sound, right? Or they're not going to put grub in there. You know, they're going to do everything, and they're going to they. You would think they'd spend time to test it and all that. Yeah, that's all they do. That's all the staff does over at Red Hat and Novell as far as selling their product. I don't know, let me stop because I, I always lose these. 